sprinkle butter on your belly to prevent stretch marks. Spinning your wedding ring over a belly to tell what gender the baby is. Yeah, I don't know that there's a lot of science to back this one up. You can't have sex when you're pregnant because it could injure the baby. Welcome back to Diana in the Pink. My name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. Thank you for joining me today. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that you won't miss my future videos about women's health and pregnancy. But let's not waste any more time on introductions and let's jump right into my top 10 favorite pregnancy myths. Wife tales, myths, just misinformation are all over the place when it comes to pregnancy. Some have been around for generations and some just like pop up on the internet out of thin air. So in this video, I'm going to debunk some of these myths and point you in the right direction with evidence-based studied facts to help you navigate through your pregnancy. Speaking of studied facts, I would really like to know where you are coming from. Are you watching this video pregnant yourself or did you just click on this video because you were curious about pregnancy myths? Put that in the comment section below. Don't be shy. Remember, it's for science. Myth number one, it's okay to drink one glass of wine when you're pregnant. Now I put that myth very first because holy cow, if you are only going to watch one myth and then click away, watch this one because the truth is alcohol can hurt your baby. Alcohol consumption while pregnant can cause something called fetal alcohol syndrome, which causes growth problems and brain damage. And the truth is, we don't really know how much alcohol consumption might hurt the baby before he or she is born. So maybe one drink throughout your whole pregnancy is okay, but we don't really know where the line is between where it's safe and when it's not. So the safest thing for you to do is to drink no alcohol at all through your pregnancy. Myth number two, you can't drink coffee while you're pregnant. Many of you will be very relieved for me to say that this is indeed a myth, but there is a little explaining. So in the first trimester, there might be, might be a slightly higher chance of having a miscarriage with overconsumption of coffee. So I'm not talking about a few cups. I'm talking about, you know, you're drinking a kegger of coffee. Free iced coffee every time I go in, which is every hour on the hour, thank you very much, and occasionally on the half hour. And they're not really seeing that issue with the second or third trimester. So if a cup of coffee in the morning is your thing, that is considered safe. Myth number three, you can't hold or pet your cat when you're pregnant. Now thank goodness this is a myth because I know a lot of people that would be devastated if they had to go nine months without petting their beloved cats. Now I'm suspecting that the reason that this myth is even out there is because there is an organism in cat feces called toxoplasmosis. So while you definitely can cuddle your cat, it's important that you don't change or clean your kitty litter box. Have somebody else do that and then they need to wash their hands afterwards. Another thing to consider is if you have a garden and your cat might poop in the garden or the neighbor's cat or strays maybe, make sure that you wash your veggies and fruit thoroughly, which I'm sure that you already do anyways. Okay, on to myth number four, which is you shouldn't exercise when you're pregnant. So if you are thinking that you could glide through your pregnancy on a nine month workout hiatus, this is not true. While there are some exercises that aren't recommended in pregnancy, the American Academy of Obstetrics and Gynecology recommend that you participate in about 30 minutes of moderate exercise five times a week. Now, if you're already exercising more than that, most likely you can just continue doing whatever you're doing. But make sure to talk to your OB in case that there are some modifications that you might need to do. For example, if you were like a heavy weightlifter or if you were into Ironman competitions or something like that. Now, if you are pregnant and you haven't been working out, but now you want to start exercising, talk to your OB first and then take it slow. Don't feel like you need to jump off the couch and run 10 miles your first day. Ease into it, take it slowly, but exercise during your pregnancy has so many benefits. It can help reduce back pain. It can help with uh, constipation. Uh, it promotes healthy weight gain during your pregnancy and it strengthens your core to help with your delivery. It also decreases your chances of getting gestational diabetes and can help manage depression and anxiety. But it's not recommended that pregnant women ski 
horseback ride, uh, scuba dive, and hot yoga is also not recommended. All right, on to myth number five, which is pregnancy cravings. Now this one can be true, but it isn't always. And so I wanted to mention it here because I have had so many people comment on my pregnancy videos about how they aren't having cravings and should they be worried? And the answer is no. You don't need to be worried about that. Some women have weird cravings, but some don't. Both are normal, so don't worry if you're not or if you are. By the way, if you are new to my channel and pregnant, I have done an entire pregnancy series walking you through pregnancy week by week and I go over so much good information about what is happening that week. I will put a link to that series right here. Definitely go check that out. And now, after that shameless plug for my pregnancy series, I'm gonna jump in to myth number six, which is more of a misnomer than a myth, but morning sickness. That name seems so mild and uneventful, but for most women, it's like 24 hours a day sickness. I think a more accurate name would be all day, all night, at its best a gnawing ache in your gut, and at its worst, you are spending the entire day with your face next to a toilet or garbage bin sickness. Okay, so in all truthfulness, not everyone experiences morning sickness, so if you are in your first trimester and you aren't feeling nauseated, then you're probably just one of those lucky 10 to 20% of women who don't get morning sickness. If you are feeling morning sickness, just hang in there. For most women, it gets better after the first trimester. Real quick though, there is something called gravidarium hyperemesis. And this is a condition in pregnancy where your morning sickness is severe and you cannot keep fluids down, you cannot keep solids down. And if this is something that you're dealing with, make sure that you contact your OB, let them know where you are so that they can help you with your symptoms. Myth number seven, you shouldn't have sex when you're pregnant. Now let me first preface this myth with a stipulation. There are a few circumstances where you actually shouldn't have sex when you're pregnant. Like if you were having preterm contractions or if you were having like a low-lying placenta, an incompetent cervix, bleeding, or certain other complications from your pregnancy. So you might need to have a discussion with your OB, but if you are having an uneventful pregnancy without any problems, sex is considered safe. It's not gonna hurt the baby. Remember, they're in a sack of fluid surrounded by a muscular uterus and they're pretty protected in there. Another myth that goes along with that is that sex can put a woman into labor. So let's just talk about that real quick. Studies do show that prostaglandins in the semen can cause the uterus to contract. We call these Braxton Hicks contractions, but studies also show that these contractions don't turn into labor contractions. Abstaining from sex, however, can actually increase the stress of both you and your partner, while participating can help relieve stress and anxiety. Plus, when you're pregnant, you have an increased blood flow to your genitals, which for some women can actually make sex more pleasurable, so that's cool too. Myth number eight, I'm in a group of bunch of these together because they all fall under the same category, and that is, different ways to try to determine the baby's gender. So mom's dry hands, the heart rate of the baby, how high you are carrying or the shape of your tummy, the old ring on a string trick where if you're hanging a ring on a string above the abdomen and if it spins in a circular motion, it's a girl and if it's a boy, it swings more like a pendulum. They're correct about 50% of the time, but it's just a guess. Like flipping a coin has the same chances of guessing correctly. But you know what does work? Ultrasounds, DNA blood test, amniocentesis, or chorionic villus sampling. Or you could just wait till the baby is born and take a look for yourself. Myth number nine, you can't fly in an airplane when you are pregnant. Now that is indeed a myth, you totally can. Up to 36 weeks is fine for most circumstances. But if you are planning on traveling far distances, just make sure to talk with your OB so that they can give you guidance specific to you. Now keep in mind, if your flight is longer than an hour or two, make sure to get up once an hour and walk the aisles because you wanna keep the circulation in your legs flowing. This will help to decrease the chances of getting a clot. And finally, myth number 10. I'm sorry about this. I generally wish this one were true, but it's not, and that is spreading cocoa butter and other creams on your tummy to prevent stretch marks. A lot of advertisers will try to convince you that this works, but there is very little evidence that supports this. But is it a waste of money? 
No, I usually do recommend that you try to keep your tummy well moisturized to help keep it from itching too much. But stretch marks probably have more to do with genetics. Ask your mom or your sisters who have already had pregnancies if they got stretch marks. If they did, then you're probably more likely to get them. Also, if you already have stretch marks maybe on your breasts or or your thighs from a growth spurt, that might suggest that you could get stretch marks on your tummy. But in my honest opinion, don't be ashamed or mad about stretch marks. They are your badge of honor for being able to bring a baby into this world, which is a beautiful thing. Now, as I mentioned before, I have a whole pregnancy series. I think that you should check it out. But before you do, if you haven't already, click subscribe and hit the notification icon and then click on this box right here and then it will take you to my week by week pregnancy series. Click on that right there and I will see you over there.